Welcome back, guys. All right, so if you were remembering my last video, I actually was showing you the setup of how to set up Raylib in CodeBlox. But maybe you don't know, you know, what you can do as far as examples are concerned. Um, if you go here for Raylib, uh, well, we'll just say Raylib. And you go here and you're looking, okay, these are some of the examples. And, you know, they kind of look cheesy, right? I mean, when you look through them, it's all like ba very basic stuff. But, 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 they do give you a lot of info. And if you combine and, and put things together and figure out how all the stuff works, copy and paste and code, and that was a slightly more advanced, so is that one. Um, and there's another one in here that I actually, yeah, that one really eats up your CPU. That's uh, using ray marching of, of a sort of a sense. Uh, so some of these are a little more advanced, I guess. Anyhow, this is what Raylib can do. Now I put together a couple of demos that is not in this list, just to kind of show off what you can do if you know how to hack <laughs> around the Raylib library. So these are not displayed anywhere. Um, this is strictly inside my, my code. It's not posted anywhere. Uh, and let's go to the GUI one first. Now this one's one that I put together uh, to test what you can do as far as the GUI-like interface. You know, when I move this code blocks window around, I'm actually using the actual Windows bar at the top. And you get minimize, maximize, and the, of course the exit button right there. But you can design your own GUI and remove the actual bar and design your own. To do that, I have set this up as a demonstration to show you this is all drawn inside of, from GUI, um, from late or uh, Raylib. And like I can maximize it, I can even minimize it, and I can exit. And here's the cool part, I can even get rid of that secondary window by going to debug mode. And in the release, I'm sorry, leaving debug mode and going into the release mode, and in the properties in code blocks, you go here and choose GUI application. However, if you're not using code blocks, well, then you have to manually at enter in, and I'll show you once I can find it. It is missing from there. So let me go ahead and recompile that so you can see. There it is, dash M windows. So dash M windows gets rid of the console window. All right, and uh, so you'll only have your GUI interface or the GUI or graphical window that you create. So now when I see it, uh, I, can, I can move it around with my mouse and everything, resize it, and notice how smooth that actually is, okay? And uh, keep in mind, that's a different color of black. It's not the same black as everything else. So as you can see, it's, it's doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing. And uh, these are the things you can do, and this is why I use Raylib as a prototype, because it allows me to test these kinds of things. Okay, so this is just one example. Here's another project. Let me go ahead and close that. Here's another project. Um, in fact, I added it to our last demo. This is a very basic uh, 6502 uh, assembler, basically um, a virtual machine in a sense. Now, keep in mind, I had to create, and in fact, that's why I left this open so I can go into it. I had to create this little NES file, and let's see, let me show you what this looks like. So open up my hex editor, drag it in there, and it's nothing but EA files except for at the very bottom, right down here, I've got uh, the L and the uh, X there. Notice they're, they're slightly different. Scrolling up just a little bit, let's see, where are you? Oops. And right there, there is more, another space there. Now what this code does is it jumps. 
And because of it jumping, I have created a loop. Okay? So this is a 64K file. Notice, 64K. It's a 64K file. And all it's going to do is loop through that file. So there's nothing graphical here. But I did this because of legalities. I can't use things like, you know, uh, you know, real games, okay? So I just did this so that it'll just kind of loop through it. So, yeah, let's just run this. And uh, I don't think I needed to recompile. I think it was already set up. Yeah, it was already set up. And uh, so this is strictly using the, um, the Rayleigh library. I did not have to hack it to add OpenGL or anything like that. So running that, and yeah, here we go. So like I can maximize this and notice that it centers on the screen. It keeps the, the uh, aspect ratio the same no matter what size. It even tells you the size over here. And notice it's just kind of looping through. And like I can actually resize this to any size I want. Now, the, the good part is, is that this is telling you the file size, the file name, and of course what version of the emulator that I have currently. Now, test, test, test. These are supposed to be buttons. I never actually finished this aspect of it. And some of the actual code aspect of it I have not finished because it was just a demonstration to show what you can do with by utilizing Raylib as a prototyping library. So what it does, it allows me to create this one file. For example, all I have here, all right, this is the Raylib library, these libs in here are the Raylib, and then all I have is the main file. So really the bulk of my code is all right here, okay? I mean, everything is here, okay? And so, yeah. It just shows it all onto the screen. Um, you know, I had to define all of the different uh, opcodes and set up the memory and all that good jazz. And then I just went through and, you know, uh, utilized the Rayleigh library to be able to see that. Now, here's the cool part is, well, I say cool part, but for me to use the uh, Xbox controller with this, I had to actually hack <laughs> the Raylid library because it was not set up for it. In fact, I actually wrote a note. Yeah, it's right here. It says, because of the Raylid library's design and how it's designed, there is no way to make an optimized solution to the is gamepad available loop that's inside or necessary. So I had to actually set this up to look through uh, 16. Raylib only supports 4, so I figured I'd just leave it as default as 4. So it, d it goes through and it checks through the uh, GLFW to verify is a controller hooked up, okay? So that's the only thing I really had to hack in order to get this to work. And that also gave me extra frame rates that I just did not or would not have had otherwise. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, set this up. Let's see here. Go to Properties, Build Targets, Release and set that to GUI, so that way I don't have that extra window, because th it was unnecessary. Okay, let me get my uh, Xbox One game controller here. Right. And I'm gonna, I'm not plugging it in just yet, but I wanted to share with you that this does, um, it, it does check it live in the loop. So I'll go ahead and run that, and so I'll just, minim actually, I could actually uh, do it this way. So let me go ahead and just shut this down because I've already compiled it. So go back here. Oh, no, that is the right one. All right, so go to the bin file, into the release, and there's my two files right there. So I can actually just copy those out. Copy to my desktop because this is all self-contained now. Um, and that's the beauty of how I designed this is so that you don't need any extra in, uh, dependencies. It, uh, and it's less than two megs just for this whole program. <laughs> at the moment. Okay, so we've got that. I'm going to go ahead and maximize it so it makes it easier for you guys to see. And watch in this area, okay? And you'll see that, uh, let's see here, plug this in. And now it's going to check and initialize my, there it is, Xbox controller. Now, obviously nothing's happening. 
on my controller because uh, I don't have a pro, you know, I'm not running a program that can take advantage of it. But the good news is I can unplug the controller and voila, it disappears. And, you know, it's that simple. So the point is, is this is what you can do with Raylib. Prototyping. You might have to do a little hacking, uh, but it's well worth it. And, um, yeah. Anyhow, uh, I don't think there's anything else I wanted to share, but uh, Raylib is an actually good tool to test with. It's just not good for production use. That's the only drawback, unless you hack it to death and uh, optimize it yourself. That'd be the only way to really use it. But <laughs> anyhow, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll catch you folks later.